So guys, hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Roman Bodjuja. I am a uh, like senior DevOps engineer in SoftSurf, uh, working in Mm. We need to understand how Puppet works and what components uh, does it have. So this is a schema of Puppet Enterprise architecture. Yeah, Puppet Enterprise, it is like a, a proprietary version of Puppet. Uh, it costs money and uh, uh, it contains some components that uh, are not present in uh, Puppet open source. Uh, but I will talk about it. So. Uh, first of all, we have like Puppet Server, yeah, this is, uh, or Puppet Master, how it says, uh, how it is called in documentation. So Puppet Server or Puppet Master, it is uh, installation that uh, on, uh, can be installed only on Linux virtual machines uh, or on Linux servers. <clears throat> and it performs uh, all the work uh, by uh, compiling, uh, compiling Puppet catalogs, uh, uh, hosting modules, connecting to agents, and so on. In enterprise, uh, in enterprise, in uh, Puppet Enterprise, we also have like components that uh, called like file, file sync, uh, client, file sync server, code manager, uh, that connect to version control. Uh, this is out of the box um, infrastructure for, uh, how to say, uh, for connecting your puppet with your version control system. Uh, it's a use case when you're storing your uh, code base in some, mm, in some Git repository, yeah, you have some branches, you're developing anything, you're writing your co uh, code files for your infrastructures and you can meet and uh, this uh, like, uh, this file, ser file sync, uh, doing all the work by uh, syncing your code from remote repository to the Puppet uh, directories and uh, to compile from them uh, your catalogs. In open source version, uh, we do not have such such components, so we have to do something, uh, uh, so probably write some scripts to implement this. Uh, what else? Uh, what else difference between uh, between open source and uh, enterprise version. So in, open, uh, in enterprise version, we have uh, role-based access uh, control service. Uh, so in enterprise version, we can uh, manage different roles uh, and users uh, for our puppet. In open source, we don't have such. And uh, uh, what else? We have a console UI service. Console UI service, this is a web console. Uh, that we have in enterprise version. In open source, we do not have such. Uh, so uh, we have to work with uh, like with uh, command line only. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we can see that all these components, they are integrated. Uh, so uh, like a console series, uh, it is integrated with not classifier. Uh, it is integrated with uh, role-based access control and so on. So cons uh, UI console, have access uh, to the, um, a lot of components from uh, from Puppet. Uh, what else? Puppet agent. Uh, Puppet agent. It is important component, and uh, Puppet agent. It is installed on your target servers or your target machines. So we can see what kind of uh, infrastructure we can uh, infrastructure components we can manage with it. So we can. Uh, it can work on bare metal, it can work on virtual machines, network switch, storage arrays. So uh, it is a uh, type of uh, hardware or servers that support it uh, <clears throat> with Puppet Agents. Mm. Okay, let's go further. So a little bit glossary uh, to understand what Puppet is. So. Uh, Puppet Manifest, it is a file, uh, file that's written on Puppet domain, uh, there should be DSL, uh, domain specific language. Uh, Puppet domain specific language, language based on Ruby and uh, it is very easy to, to write on it. Uh, 
and we will repeat further. Uh, so manifest, it is a file that um, stores instruction uh, what will be uh, what will be done on our target machines. Yes, yeah? so uh, this is our uh, infrastructure as a code like main, main component. Uh, a few minutes ago, I talked about catalog. So what is catalog? Uh, catalog is document on Puppet Master uh, that describes uh, desired state, what we want to achieve on our target machine. Yeah? So uh, we are writing manifests, but then uh, when, we, uh, when Puppet server works, it compiles our manifest and our configuration data uh, to the catalog. And this catalog, uh, it is applied on target machines by our Puppet agent. Uh, puppet facts also is very important, uh, very important stuff. Uh, this is list of information or some kind of information that puppet agent provide to master. Uh, so we have on our targets we have uh, a lot of a lot of information. We have some environment variables. We have uh, operation system. We have version of this operation system. Uh, we have uh, IP address, DNS name, and so on and so on and so on. So all this, all this stuff, it can uh, it can be gathered by a Puppet Agent, and like a key value uh, key value dictionary provided to master, and uh, then master use it. Uh, templates. Mm, templates is a sort of document that combine code, data. Uh, when you, for example, uh, have to write some uh, script on your favorite language like uh, shell, PowerShell, anything else, you can put it into templates, uh, store it, and they just uh, populate to uh, Puppet Agent during configuration. And uh, model model is a collection of manifests and data, uh, such as facts, files, templates, uh, and it helps to organize your Puppet code. Uh, we have in in Puppet, we uh, they have a lot of uh, models written by uh, some uh, by by Puppet or by uh, someone else, uh, and uh, we can find them on Puppet Forge. It's like a repository with models. Uh, there are various of them, and uh, model it's like a like a library, like a DLL or, or like some any kind of package <coughs> that can be uh, connected to your Puppet and to reuse it in your manifest. How does it work in general? So uh, we have agent, agent installed on uh, like on our target machine and agents uh, sends facts and requests a catalog. Uh, Puppet Master compiles this catalog based on agent facts and returns it to, to node. Uh, then agent applies this catalog. Uh, it is like going through this catalog, understand what it should do. Uh, do we need to under, uh, do we need to change something, or our desired state uh, is the same as uh, as our current state? And then, when agent applied this catalog, uh, it sends a report back to master that okay, I'm fine, or I'm failed with some errors. Uh, so master is aware about uh, situation on agent. <coughs> So uh, today I want to uh, I want to go through a process of uh, installing and configuring uh, IIS web server on Windows. Uh, uh, I'm my main profile is like uh, Windows DevOps, so I will go through the Windows infrastructure. But uh, the process is the same for any other operation system. Uh, so this is like an example of our uh, Puppet manifest. Yeah. So. Uh, let's go through it and <clears throat> look into details. So first of all, uh, every Puppet manifest, it starts with the word uh, class. Yeah, so this is a class. This is a class for a web server, uh, how we can see from the names. And uh, this class, it, um, it uh, receives two, uh, two parameters, like web server root folder uh, with default value, and web service, like name of web service, uh, also with default name, uh, with default value. Uh, 
Then, uh, uh, then after um, we are going, uh, what we are going to do? Uh, we are going to use method from uh, Puppet um, from Puppet model, uh, and this method called like Windows feature. Yeah. So uh, Windows feature, it is a, a method that. <coughs> Uh, can install or remove any any kind of Windows features that we have uh, on our Windows server. So uh, what we are writing there is that uh, we are going to find feature that means web server, yeah, and uh, we have to ensure that this feature is present on our on our target machine. So. Uh, in this case, uh, Puppet with uh, Puppet agent when it is runs uh, through uh, like our catalog, it sees this instruction that uh, okay we need to install this web server feature. It checks if it if it is installed, so that is fine. We will skip it. If it is not installed, so we should do we should install it. And uh, what we are going to do then, we are going to create the application pool. This is also instruction from our model. Uh, it means that we are going to uh, ease application pool, configure ease application pool, uh, and uh, you can see here that uh, we can combine like uh, string uh, string values with variable values. Yes, yeah, so we have a web service variable uh, with uh, the, uh, called uh, that, that has a parameter my API service, and uh, we are um, creating. Uh, name of uh, we are creating our application pool with the name app pool uh, like my API service and some some parameters some parameters of this uh, of this application pool uh, some of them they are like hard coded yeah they are um, always the same for all configuration and uh, some of them like username and password we can pass uh, through a variable set. And uh, one more uh, one more instruction in our manifest. It is like uh, okay, let's create also uh, IS application. That's uh, also like pretty simple. So we have a web service name uh, again. We have a uh, again web service name, and uh, like our physical paths will be web server root uh, web service. Yeah. So. Um, this is this is very 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 simple manifest that's uh, doing like three things, uh, ensuring that feature is enabled, that we have our web server installed, and then configure this web server on single service, uh, single server. So, uh, but uh, we have this manifest, yeah, we have this manifest written, uh, but. Next, we have to assign this manifest to our like a specific node. Yeah, uh, how it is, how we can do this? So it's a uh, base way how to do it. Uh, so we have different uh, ways. Like uh, first, it is an include like syntax when uh, in our main main file we uh, we are writing that uh, node and name of our node includes web server. So web server it is a name of our class. Uh, there are also limitations that in this case we could not uh, we could not pass any parameters yet yeah, to this uh, to this uh, class. Yeah. So if we want to configure different location, not like www root, uh, so we have to uh, to use class name syntax. Uh, in include like syntax, we will use, uh, it will have only like uh, default default parameters. In a class-like syntax, uh, there is a different uh, there is a different way to describe it. So yeah, we uh, we are uh, assigning like class also to Puppet Agent One. Uh, we can pass parameters, but in this case, uh, there is a different problem that we cannot reuse the same class twice. Yeah. For example, you want to uh, here there will be not a web server, but there will be a user creation on your server, yeah. And you have to create several users. You cannot do it because you will get uh, an error uh, during catalog compilation. So uh, this is also an issue. Uh, also, what is what is uh, what's more issues with this approach? It's like assigning directly nodes with parameters to our main manifest and uh, apply some classes to this. So, if we have 
like a simple uh, simple infrastructure that contains uh, probably from I don't know around 10 machines or 20, 20, uh, 20 machines it can be fine you can use like a very straightforward solution uh, just having one uh, main manifest having several classes and assign uh, this this classes directly to you manifest yeah uh, so it was um, it was the way from what puppet started yeah in the very beginning but uh, infrastructure become complex and in your environment you usually have uh, several tires several with uh, different configurations that they should have you have also various of environment you have QA staging production and uh, they uh, should be like pretty the same from uh, from configuration stuff yeah they they should have the same components like production and staging they should be pretty the same uh, uh, and they are regularly very similar especially with production and staging uh, from a, a configuration perspective what I mean is that they have the same numbers of uh, servers they have uh very um, how to say uh very very like similar configuration yeah uh but um, you you will have uh, you will need to have uh the same components installed yeah but with the different parameters uh you will need to have like uh web servers but uh, for development it will have uh, its own uh, bindings, uh, bindings uh, for production. It will have own bindings for development. You probably will will need to host uh, different applications on the same server. On production, you probably will have to host only the one application, and so on. So it will be uh, like uh, mm, your configuration will be from one one point of view very similar, but uh, from the second point of uh, uh, it will have uh, differences, differences in values that you should pass to configure this. And uh, what we should do in this case uh, to have a configuration for various <coughs> environment that uh, are similar and different. So uh, for uh, complex infrastructure, we have uh, like three mm, like, mm, case tones. Yeah. So uh, first of all, it is puppet uh, roles and profile pattern. It is like uh, most common patterns that we have to use uh, to create reusable configuration uh, and to separate uh, to separate our data from our manifest. Uh, then uh, we have Hiera. What is Hiera? Uh, Firstly, here it was uh, like an additional component, uh, like additional additional library for Puppet that you have to install and configure by your own. But right now, here it is a, a part of a Puppet uh, that can do uh, two very important things. So first of all, it can store configuration data in a k-value pairs, like k-value dictionary, and uh, the second thing it is uh, helps to look up data uh, with a particular model uh, and to provide this data to manifest during catalog uh, compilation. Uh, and the third case term it is a factor. So factor it is a component. Uh, it was on our big schema in the beginning of uh, puppet infrastructure, uh, puppet architecture. So factor it is a component that. Uh, provide your uh, puppet master with information about uh, core and custom uh, facts that you have on your servers. On your servers, you have a bundle of core facts that provided by default out of the box from this puppet, and you also have uh, you can you can have custom facts if uh, you want to. Uh, to get something else, uh, something else from your servers that is uh, not in out of the box in this puppet, you can write a provider for your custom facts uh, on Ruby language uh, also and to gather this information from your nodes. Combining uh, these three tools together, uh, you will get a very flexible infrastructure with the configuration. <coughs> uh, okay. 
So roles and profiles, let's start from this. Mm, so roles and profiles, uh, this is like two extra layer of uh, interaction between your not classifier and your component model. So uh, what does it mean? Uh, so component model, like we told before, this is model that can be written by Puppet, for example. Yeah, and this model you can download from Puppet Forge, install it uh, on Puppet Master, and this model provides you capabilities to uh, configure um, to configure your uh, your targets um, with functions that this model provides. Uh, profiles. Profiles. It is a wrapper for uh, for classes. Yeah, like uh, previously we looked into class uh, for web server. So right now uh, we will uh, we will call this class like a profile. Uh, this prof this profile it can use uh, different classes. Also it can use different models uh, like. Like we had in our web servers, uh, web server class that we use it model for installing web uh, server feature, and we had model uh, for configuring good web server. And roles, roles, roles. It is a wrapper class uh, that can contain multiple multiple profile. It is a wrapper uh, on profiles. So. Um, uh, to start using this configuration, uh, to start using these roles and profiles pattern, you have to think first of all about your infrastructure, uh, about layers in your infrastructure. Uh, so what does it mean? Then in our schema we had uh, different layers, so like front end layer, like this is web UI, we had web API, we had some uh, just uh, back, back end services and so on. Uh, and right now, let's decompose our infrastructure and uh, create these uh, classes using roles and profiles part. So, what models we will use? We will use uh, model Puppet Windows uh, um, that allows us to enable disable features uh, and configuring Windows Windows Server. Yeah, and we will use a model like Puppet Puppet Labs uh, IIS. So that enables us to configure uh, IIS web server. Uh, these models, we will uh, consume them in, in a class, so profile windows, and we will consume uh, IIS model in profile windows web. Uh, also, um, so uh, why we split, uh, why do we split these uh, classes in the same way? It is like, like layer it, uh, layer it architecture, yeah. So our base class for our Windows servers, it describes the configuration that we want to have on all Windows machine across our uh, across our infrastructure, yeah. So uh, if I if I want to have the same on Windows machine, I put it in the separate class, yeah, and uh, describe it once, and then I will just put the uh, correct uh, correct data to it, correct parameters to this class, and it is a uh, very reusable step. Also, in case I want to uh, configure web servers, yeah, if I want just to enable web server on some uh, bundle of servers, I uh, put this uh, instruction to my Windows web profile. Yeah, this class it will it will be uh, it will describe. Uh, configuration for all web servers that I want to have and uh, in my Windows infrastructure. Yeah? If I have uh, Linux machines and I want to uh, put here different configurations, for example, using Apache or Nginx uh, server, so I will use different profile yeah, and write different profile for this. Uh, on uh, on Windows uh, on Windows web layer, yeah, I can use, I can have a specific configuration for my front end servers. Yeah, so my front servers, front end servers, they will have different configuration than my back end servers. Uh, that means that I put uh, instructions in my manifest for our, my uh, for our front end or our UI configuration, and uh, also I can apply it. 
to all the servers across my uh, dev, QA, staging, production, and other environments. <clears throat> so, uh, what rules? Uh, what rules and like tips uh, that we have here for uh, for profiles? Uh, so yeah, the first thing that uh, we have to be sure that we can safely include any profile multiple times. So we don't need to use uh, like resource like declaration and them as it uh, strict us that uh, we can include uh, one profile only one time. Uh, profiles, yeah, profiles can include uh, other profiles, so it is uh, uh, very flexible. Uh, profiles, uh, yeah, profiles own all the class parameters, uh, so uh, if we need to if we need to use any kind of variable inside our profile class, uh, we have to uh, we have to own it with a profile class. Uh, for for roles, for roles, mm, first of all, role uh, does not contain any kind of logic. If in profile we are creating uh, we are creating logic. In roles, we do not create lo logic. Uh, we just mm, like mm, you know, like uh, aggregate, yeah, uh, like aggregate different profiles in a single role. So if I want to create role uh, web UI, yeah. So th this is my web UI server. So what I what I'm going to uh, put in this role, yeah, I'm going to put uh, my profile Windows profile here because my uh, my servers are running on Windows and I have to be sure that uh, every component, uh, every, I don't know, security staff, uh, any kind of Windows features, they are uh, installed in my, on my server. Yeah, then my server, my server is web server. So next, what I want to do is include a uh, class for, uh, for, window, for Windows Lab here. And finally, mm, my role is UI, so I uh, include also my web UI profile here in this role. Uh, okay, so role, yeah, it is used just include. We do not pass any class parameters. Uh, again, yeah, should not class parameters for any profile. So role, it, role, it is just a container. And uh, one more thing, it's uh, uh, name of role, yeah. So our name of role uh, should be based on our like business business name of type of not it's managed. So that means if we call our servers web UI, it should be web UI. If we call our servers front end, so it should be uh, front end, yeah, and so on. <clears throat> okay, so the second component is Hiera, uh, and uh, yeah, we told that Hiera. Uh, it is like managing data and looking up this data into class profile. Uh, so Hiera uh, gives us a strange of uh, creating reusable code. Uh, using combining roles and profiles pattern with Hiera, uh, we can do uh, two, uh, we can do one important thing. It is separate uh, our manifest with instructions from our configuration data. Uh, Hiera uh allows us to store our configuration data in separate files in uh hierarchical structure <clears throat> and automatically populate our classes with this data uh half here config is looks yeah so this is base here config we will take a look on this uh more so <clears throat> uh what do we have there so we have uh, formats that uh, here uh, will store our data in YAML. We can also store in JSON, but YAML is uh, more common for um, storing uh, data with Hiera. Uh, also, we have like this uh, this pass when where Hiera will look uh, for configuration data for our for our uh, for our manifest. Yeah, so we can see that uh, here we have also. Like uh, variables, yeah. Uh, with this, uh, with this science, it is a variables, and these variables will be substituted with uh, uh, with uh, with data that we received from uh, 
from our target machines with facts. So uh, in our case, here we'll look uh, for some some paths, yeah, for some paths it's, uh, that will contain from like uh, our uh, application ID or our application name, our server role, it can be front end, UI, uh, backend server, Windows server, and so on, uh, and our environment. Uh, when we uh, found this uh, with this file, it will take it and uh, go through data that we have here um, and, com and use it for compile catalog. If if uh, white is here, yeah, because it is uh, hierarchy. So if we uh, if we can't find anything, if we can't find anything by this first pass, sorry, uh, by this first pass, it will look up uh, next one. So we can find for some common configuration. Yeah, if you do not have specific communicate uh, configuration. We will look up for some common configuration, uh, or we will just look up for features, uh, features list, and so on. Uh, that's what uh, that's how Hiera works. Uh, this is an example of our Hiera uh, Hiera file that of our demo application. Uh, next is our role, yeah, uh, web UI, and our dev environment name of our environment so here we have uh, you can see that we have some variables with their with their values uh, here supports different kind of variables like arrays you can see here uh, it can it supports array of uh, like um, hashtags yeah, they call it hash hashes uh, just strings numbers and so on <coughs> Okay, and tips for making good uh, hierarchy. Keep it short, yeah? If it is short, uh, it is fine. Um, use rolling profiles method. It works, uh, it works well um, together. <clears throat> so if, we, uh, if our built-in facts don't provide like easy way to represent uh, our infrastructure or difference in our infrastructure, uh, we have to create our own facts. Uh, yeah. Give to each environment, production, test development, its own hierarchy. So this is tips for here. And yeah, uh, I, I'm going to show your demo uh, with these examples that uh, we go through, but probably before it, you have any questions that we can discuss. Okay, if there is no, uh, there is no question, so let's go demo. Just give me please a minute uh, to show you. So uh, what is our like demo infrastructure? So first of all, I have uh, some Puppet Master. It's running in container on my, uh, on my laptop and I have uh, server that I want to configure like a uh, web UI, yeah, with and install there uh, some IIS and configure uh, application on this IIS. Um, this server also is running on on Hyper V on my machine. It's pre configured so Puppet Agent installed there. I don't want to. Uh, spend time on such kind of thing, and <clears throat> uh, and let's go through uh, let's go through a code that we will that we will use. Let's explore it. Just just a second. It is opening. Okay. Yeah. So So first of all, 
Yeah, let's, uh, this is a structure of uh, like my uh, puppet code uh, for this demo application. So we have this, uh, this demo application folder. Uh, also, uh, you can see here that we have uh, what I told about like uh, profile and roles. Let's go to profile. Uh, here is some uh, structure. Uh, here is here is some structure uh, in this uh, in this profile folder. We have uh, what do we have? Uh, we have manifest files for our infrastructure. So let's go uh, from the base layer. It is like uh, Windows. Yeah, Windows manifest. Uh, we have class that describes how to how to install and configure uh, just a. A generic Windows Server, yeah. So we uh, we want to install uh, some bundle of features. Yeah, we we can see that it is a variable variable of type array, and uh, we want to ensure that all of these features they are present uh, on our Windows servers. Uh, our web class, yeah. So our web class, it is uh, another one manifests. Uh, <coughs> When we are also, when we are also installing uh, installing some features, this is features that for, we need to web server. And uh, here we have uh, one more stuff. It is installing uh, URL rewriter model uh, from some file share and get this MSI package and install it. Uh, then under web folder, we have our UI manifest. Uh, that accept more parameters like uh, some application pools, some directories, virtual directories, uh, uh, name of websites, and so on. And uh, here we have also a um, couple of things to do. So what we, what we are doing there, so we are creating some directories uh, for our websites. We are creating application pools. Uh, we are creating websites, so it is default websites, uh, and set uh, bindings to these websites. Uh, we are creating uh, application under this website, uh, some virtual directories, and so on. So this is like our manifestor that are doing uh, all the work. All their names are starting with profile because we are using uh, roles and profiles pattern. Uh, and let's go to a role. Uh, so where is our role web UI? So here, here in our web UI role, what we what we have, we have like just include of some uh, of some manifest. Yeah, we can. Uh, okay, let's let's start from from this. Yeah, let it be. Uh, let it be commented. So in our web UI uh, role, we include two profiles. We include Windows Web and Windows Web UI profile. Uh, what next? We have, uh, we have here a file. We have here a file uh, like we uh, see on uh, slides. So uh, so Puppet will look up for a configuration, for a configuration of our, uh, for, for our application uh, by next, next path. So application ID, in our case, application ID, it is demo. Yes, yeah? so we have folder, uh, we have folder for demo. Uh, we have folder for demo, but as it is here, so it will look like into data deer. Yeah, we have data deer here. So this is a pass to relative Hiera directory. So we, uh, it will go to data directory, it looks, uh, look for demo here. So we have the demo directory. Then uh, server role, in our case, we are configuring web UI. So it will look for web UI. Okay. And here for, for web UI, we have a file with environment. Yeah? We have dev and we have, we have QA. Uh, Let's go to our dev file and look into this. Uh, so in this file, we have all the, all the data for our configuration. So we have variables uh, for deployment group. We have variables for uh, like web API, 
username, passwords. We have uh, here's uh, here's our variables for UI for UI role. Yeah, this roles we are not using this role uh, during demo because our server uh, is from web UI role. Uh, so so we have name of uh, two application pools that uh, we are going to create. We have uh, data directories uh, that we have to create. We have some virtual directories that we have to create under our website. Uh, we have bindings and so on. So we separated uh, what we should do, like what we should install and data, what we should put to our manifest. Uh, and also mm, one more thing, uh, one more thing that I want to uh, show you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, site, site.pp, it is like a main manifest from Puppet, yeah? And uh, what we are going to do, uh, we say that uh, please include here are roles here. What means here are roles in our uh, in our here are files files with data? Uh, we have we have this uh, this string. Uh, it is uh, roles. It will describe uh, what kind of what kind of role puppet will look up. Uh, when it is uh, reading this here data. So we, uh, we tell uh, to the main manifest, okay, include me roles. It goes to here, look up uh, for the, um, how to say it, for the here configuration file for this application, yeah. Goes to this and sees that, uh, okay, we need to include uh, role web UI. Then it understands that it should find uh, find manifest, find manifest that names role, find class, find class it is better. Uh, find class, uh, which name is role web UI. We have it, uh, we have it here in, under our roles folder. Yeah, and it will include this role web UI into our uh, like process of catalog compilation. Uh, okay. So, so let's go. Let's go to our server and uh, make some, make a little bit work a little bit with it. So, just a second. I need to open this RDP. I'm sorry, my laptop uh, is slow. I believe it's probably because Zoom is working and. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Looks like it's it's fine. So yeah, my puppet my puppet agent is installed. Something went wrong. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is it? Oh, yes. Just let me open one more console. Sorry, let me let me please disconnect uh, this external screen, and uh, I will share just the screen with my laptop because it is very slow. And just a second. So <clears throat> yeah, it's much better. 
Uh, so let's uh, let's find this one. So on my Windows machine, this is like a clear uh, clear configuration, and uh, let me trigger first of all Puppet Agent with some parameters uh, to look what does it can. So uh, let's look uh, to the facts. Yeah, uh, we we told uh, we told a lot about facts, so let's look into facts. Uh, I have to run like Puppet Puppet Facts here. And it will show us what do we have. So puppet facts return to us various of variables uh, and their values that it is gathered from a target machine. Uh, you can see that there are a lot of a lot of faults. And all these facts they uh, can be uh, can be used for uh, classification of nodes. Yeah, so we can use them for uh, applying different configuration. For example, uh, I don't know. Uh, we can use uh, variable kernel windows to apply some window specific configuration. Yeah, we can use. Um, I don't know, uh, apply some network specific configuration if we have such, uh, and so on and so on and so on. So this is like a, a core facts, core facts that Puppet gathered from uh, our machines. Uh, in our in our case, uh, we had like some specific configuration, specific facts, like custom facts. Uh, that we sh that we are going to use to classify our nodes. It was like subserve application ID and so and subserve uh, environment and something something like this. Uh, so uh, this fact, uh, it is custom fact. Mm, let me show them also. Just a second. So it is Ruby file with some code, and uh, so in in our case uh, we are storing our custom facts in a registry, uh, but they can be stored everywhere uh, you want in environment variables and so on. So let me create this custom facts. Let me create this uh, these parameters on our target machine to be able use them. Uh, in, uh, in our configuration process. So I need to go uh, scale local machine software. Subserve server info. Server info, and uh, here I will create several string values like uh, environment dev. Oh, don't need this one. Soft serve app ID. It was demo, and um, what else? What else did we have there in our in our Hera? So we have a uh, soft serve server role, soft serve server role, soft serve app ID. So server role. Uh, just quick question: Is it case sensitive? Uh, uh, no, uh, no. In, in our case, it's not case sensitive uh, because uh, you can see in this file in uh, in custom facts, yeah, that uh, we are uh, make the down case. Ah, yeah, I see. And our server role it will be web UI. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, let me run this uh, this command again. Puppet facts. Okay, that's fine. So uh, you can see here uh, that it gathered new facts. Yeah. So and right now our um, our facts uh, they appears in this list. So right now these facts will be uh, pushed to the our uh, puppet master, and it can use it to uh, to find correct uh, configuration file in our catalog. So let's trigger. Uh, Let's trigger, trigger our agent, puppet agent minus T. I hope it's not triggered uh, by its own because it has an interval like it, I believe 30 seconds by default. Okay, yeah, it, uh, it missed something, some components, some web administration. So yeah, it is uh, because my environment is in Docker container, it's not safe all the, uh, all the models. So what do we have? UI, web UI, line 18, what it cannot configure web administration. Just, just a second. We can go to Try again. Looks like model is installed, but Let's try to install this model. It's it is writing that it is installed, but in Docker it can be missed some files because of uh, volume. Uh, model install. By the way, let's go uh, over Web UI manifest. It's a quick hack. Just to let's try this way. <laughs> The administration, it cannot find some administration command. Thank you. 
Okay, it cannot configure a virtual directory. So let me comment it and run it once again. So you can see right now that uh, it's compiled compiled catalog, received it from server, uh, cache it on local machine on our server, and right now it is applying this catalog, applying configuration version and some number of this version. So we can see that it started uh, installation of uh, features that is required that are required for our server, and. Uh, it is configuring, so let's wait. We can also open Enet Manager Console. Oh, we even doesn't have it. MGR. Yeah, so our website web server is not configured right now. We do not have even a console for managing IS. So let's wait a couple of minutes and see how it is installed and configured. By the way, uh, while it is installing, you can ask any kind of question you have. We can use this uh, time for Q&A session. Just have one question. Uh, for which purposes you're using parameterized profiles? Uh, so, sorry, for which purposes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you using parameterized profiles? Uh, we are using it uh, because, like, uh, it is a way to look up uh, look up data from here and pass them to to classes. Yeah, so we have different configuration, for example, for for different uh, environments, and we are storing it in here configuration, and uh, so. Uh, it is look up in uh, look up in values uh, that we have in here. So let me let me show it uh, again. So here you can see that uh, in our uh, uh, Windows Web UI profile, yeah, we have a um, couple of variables, and these variables uh, we have to we have to look up from somewhere. And Puppet allows like auto lookup uh, of these values from here configuration. So if we go to, uh, to, to, to data folder yeah, and web UI, and just a second, just let me, come on, how to, ah, wait. So here in our data, in our uh, data file, in our dev, uh, dev YAML, uh, we have values uh, for all this, for all these variables. So we are separating logic that we have in profile uh, with uh, data file. So for QA, for example, we will have uh, another file with another configuration. And uh, if we are changing something, uh, in names, in, uh, in configuration data, it is mm, it doesn't affect uh, like our profile logic. And yeah, thank you. And the second question: uh, uh, How about uh, some secret information? So you are storing 
passwords in plain text? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, let me show you once uh, one thing. Uh, so in uh, here in Hiera, uh, in Hiera you have also um, like a pass to uh, to keys. Yeah. You can generate keys and uh, encrypt uh, sensitive information with these keys. What uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, this uh, you will have this like a public and private keys. You will have a uh, key on your agent. Uh, you will have a key on the server, and uh, here you will have encrypted values uh, in your in your configuration file, and it will not be in plain text. Uh, so just to uh, decrypt uh, some secrets, you have to, um, in some way, uh, through uh, private key to agent node. Am I right? Mm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, how it uh, how it sends like private key to agent. Probably it is uh, figured by uh, by puppets. Uh, I'm not sure, but I know that uh, we use this encryption uh, encryption in uh, in our infrastructure. And so there is no any action uh, uh, to be uh, from our side to decrypt, yeah? Uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is automatically. Uh -huh. Yeah, we do, we do not uh, we do not go to manually on our servers and uh, decrypt them and then apply catalog. So it is working in an automatic way. Mm, and we do not need to do any actions with uh, private keys or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is still installing. Let me also, uh, while it is installing uh, features, so let me show uh, your to you features files. So it is just uh, just separate YAML, yeah, with the features, and there are features for uh, for Windows in a like in a array. And there are a number of features for uh, for web server. Also, also just in the right. And uh, when Puppet uh, goes to uh, when it, when it compiles catalog, it goes. Uh, it takes our web profile. Yeah. Here we have like features variable. It lookups it automatically. And just uh, pass as an array to the Windows feature command, and it is ensuring one by one it is going through this array and ensuring that all our features that are present in server, if they are not present, it is installing it. Uh, there are mm, uh, there are a couple of documents on uh, Puppet uh, about uh, how you should name your variables and. Uh, to allow them like auto lookup, yeah, because um, Puppet made auto lookup um, based on uh, class name and variable name. So uh, please uh, look at class name profile Windows Web, and here we have variable features. Let's go to uh, to our data file. Uh, features and uh, features so it names profile windows web features yeah but here uh but here in web ui uh in your in oh, a minute. in web ui or in web server it is better to use web server web server We have just features, yeah. So it look up <laughs> variable under profile Windows Windows web server, and then adding features and find it with this name. This is one of the tricky moments about uh, how to look up these variables uh, because. <clears throat> 
if you don't want to look up them manually like uh, we do in uh, an example of file share yeah because file share is um, how to say is a, a single a single variable for various profiles yeah we, we probably can move it to some uh, to some common uh, common configuration to refactor it, but uh, here we just reuse variable for uh, for Windows yeah, for Windows profile, and in this case uh, we need to look up it manually. Yeah? But for features for features variable it is looked up automatically by uh, by Puppet. Still installing.
Puppet Enterprise. Uh, so uh, it's a little bit easier. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I can't show you like a web console and how it is uh, working in Puppet Enterprise because it's on customer side. But on Puppet Enterprise, we can uh, we can skip like uh, creating roles and we can skip creating. Uh, Mm, how it is to say probably even even skip creating this uh, here files uh, on puppet we can classify um, classify our nodes using node classifier in web UI uh, console so uh, we can um, we can uh, just classify our uh, cre create a node groups using custom facts so we will or not custom or core facts uh, so uh, you are defining a list of machine dynamically using some facts yeah so you uh, put there that okay I just want to uh, I just want to create a node group that will describe uh, my application yeah or my infrastructure for a specific case uh, based on these facts one, two, three, uh, and uh, it will dynamically uh, create you node group, and you can assign your manifests there in uh, in your uh, in your, for for this node group. Uh, so it is easier in Puppet Enterprise. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> we are not. Uh, but no, no. Uh, you still need here there. Yeah, you still need here to look up configuration files here. You do not need. Um, you do not need roles uh, because you can use uh, node groups uh, based on custom facts and it is more uh, more visible uh, through UI but you still need uh, here to look up data to look up configuration data and uh, one more point to uh, here uh, hierarchy is that uh, puppet recommends uh, to do not more than uh, four layers here, yeah. So you can have uh, like application, <clears throat> application name, like uh, application tier in your application, some some specific like environment and so on. This is three three layers. Uh, so three four layers, it is fine uh, for here to uh, quickly look up your data in case you, uh, of course, have have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of servers a lot of uh, configurations that you are managed uh, by it Guys, uh, while we are waiting for, uh, okay, got. Uh, while we are waiting for uh, installation, I have uh, something to ask you to do. We have a poll from from our uh, technical group. Uh, seems we are going to have such uh, announcement next time but still I want you to look at the voting and uh, if you have some uh, uh, ideas or commands or something to add to this poll please feel free to add I'll uh, add this link to our chat and after meeting please please feel free to to add your options to i don't know to vote 
if you have some comments, you can comment this poll. Sorry, Roman, I have to. 